What does an archaeologist do when they come across something they can't explain? In most cases, they'll contact a scientist. What does the scientist do when they realize they can't explain the discovery either? That's a good question. Some discoveries made by archaeologists are beyond our understanding, and you're going to see some of the best of them in this video. Archaeologists are sometimes guilty of getting a little too excited when they find interesting artifacts. So we're usually a little wary when someone describes something as the find of the century. The experts who found this ancient Celtic shield in December 2019 used that description. But are they exaggerating? We'll let you decide. The shield was the standout find inside the tomb of a Celtic warrior that also contained a chariot, the skeletons of ponies buried standing upright, and many more weapons. The burial site, which is in Pocklington, East Yorkshire, England, is roughly 2,300 years old. While humans have been found buried with chariots in the UK before, this is the first and only example of such a burial that also includes horses or ponies. What makes the shield so unusual is its scalloped border design, which is totally unlike any other Iron Age shield ever found in Europe. Metal-faced shields with elaborate designs were previously thought to have been used exclusively in ceremonies rather than in battle, but the telltale signs of repair work carried out on this artifact suggest it saw battle more than once. The unusual design is either a reflection of the owner having a unique personality, or perhaps the owner being someone of unique importance. We don't know much about the Pictish people of ancient Scotland, but one of the few things we do know about them is that they were very keen on making stone cross slabs. They made at least 50 of the slabs, which might have been a type of marker stone. And of those, the Dingwall stone is the best preserved and most fascinating. Archaeologists have two ideas about how this stone, which was made around 1,200 years ago, might have been used. The first is as a landmark, helping the Pictish people find their way home after a day of hunting. The second is as a warning to non-Picts, alerting them that Picts live nearby, and if intruders got too close, they might place themselves in mortal danger. The warning theory might be the more likely explanation. It would certainly explain why the stone is covered in shields, swords, and humanoid figures with animal heads. If you saw this while walking through the forest or a field, you probably wouldn't see it as an invitation. The reverse side of the stone is believed to be decorated with a crescent and V-rod shape, although the archaeologists currently studying it have been strangely reluctant to provide photos of that side of the stone. Maybe there's something there they don't want us to see. We all know somebody who loves sports so much that they make their love of sports the whole foundation of their personality. Apparently, there were people like that around 2,000 years ago, too. We know that because the grave of a supposed ancient sports fan was found in Boyanovo, Bulgaria in September 2019. Inside the grave were the skeletal remains of its occupant and a jar that's thought to be a representation of the head of either a boxer or a wrestler. Experts at the scene believe the burial site is a necropolis belonging to an elite-level family of the Thracian society. The best-known Thracian in history was Spartacus, the rebel slave who rose up against the Romans. This Thracian head is made of brass and would likely have been used as a vessel for the storage of liquids like perfume or balm. The idea that it represents a boxer or a wrestler comes from the fact that the man's nose is visibly broken. Experts have discounted the possibility that it's a likeness of the person buried in the grave. Although strangely, they haven't said why. An archaeological discovery doesn't have to be especially large in order for it to be interesting. Just look at this delicately engraved stone seal for proof of that. It's a relic of the Assyrian Empire and it's approximately 3,000 years old. The artifact was found close to Zerzavan Castle in Diyarbakir, Turkey in October 2019. It's inscribed with a human-like figure thought to represent an Assyrian deity, along with depictions of a bird, the Tree of Life, and a vial of holy water. An object such as this would have been used to denote power and authority, and would perhaps have confirmed the source and authenticity of a message. 
Its discovery so close to the castle raises questions about how old the castle might be. Archaeologists have been able to prove that it's at least 1,700 years old, but many experts have always suspected that it might be far older, and this discovery might help prove it. Even if the current form of the castle is only 1,700 years old, there could have been a much older Assyrian settlement in the same location 1,300 years before it was built. This is only a small artifact, but it might change history. Abu Dhabi is full of precious jewels and stones these days, but most of them belong to the extremely wealthy people who live there. The presence of precious stones on the land is nothing new, though. In fact, in October 2019, the world's oldest pearl was found on Marawa Island, just off Abu Dhabi's coast. The tiny, slightly pink pearl has been dated to approximately 8,000 years ago and has been taken by historians as evidence that the precious stones were treated as valuable commodities, even in Neolithic times. It seems that our ancient ancestors were as enthusiastic about elegant accessories as we are today. It's likely that the stones were used as jewelry, but they would also probably have been used as commodities with which to trade for ceramics and other goods from Mesopotamia. The pearl is the most significant find made so far at the site, but Marawa Island has also recently given up a set of shell beads, arrowheads made from flint, and many beautiful ceramics. All of the goods recently went on display as part of Abu Dhabi's 10,000 Years of Luxury exhibition in the Abu Dhabi Louvre. The Roman Empire spread far and wide across Europe in ancient times, leaving traces behind in every country it reached. One such trace has recently been found in Croatia, where archaeologists have been excavating a full-sized Roman chariot, with the skeletal remains of the horses that once pulled it still attached. It's thought that chariot burials of this kind were reserved for extremely wealthy Roman families of the 3rd century. The discovery was made close to the Croatian city of Vinkovci, at the bottom of a large, undisturbed burial chamber. Based on previous burials of this kind in the area, historians believe that the human occupant of the tomb was a local leader of some kind and played an important role in the social or political structures of the old Roman region of Pannonia. Chariots of this kind were used in battles long before this tomb was created, but by the first century, their role in combat had been reduced and they were more likely to be used during processions or in competitive sports. Oddly, the chariot and the horses appear to have been standing upright when they were buried, raising the unpleasant prospect that the horses were alive at the time. Owning a metal detector is a virtual necessity if you're an amateur treasure hunter. Time and again, they've proven to be invaluable tools when it comes to finding lost treasure, such as this utterly unique Bronze Age gold ring that was found in a field in Cumbria, England, in October 2019. The artifact was found by a man named Billy Vaughn, a relative newcomer to the hobby who'd owned his metal detector for only six months before he literally struck gold. He'd already found a few old coins on the day he found this ring, but after getting a very strong positive signal from his device, he dug down around six inches into the ground and found the ancient object waiting for him. Billy immediately got in touch with professional archaeologists, who confirmed that his discovery is 22 karat solid gold and around 3,800 years old. Perhaps more significantly than that, it's the first complete Bronze Age penannular ring ever found in the country. Artifacts like this have been found before, but only broken ones. The value of the gold alone is around $15,000, but its historical importance means its true value is likely far higher. As we're on the topic of ancient British discoveries, let's talk about this Viking Age arm ring. It's part of the famous Galloway Hoard, a large collection of Viking artifacts found in the Galloway region of Scotland in 2014. The collection has been studied extensively in the years since its discovery, and in October 2019, researchers made a new breakthrough. By translating a series of Viking runes etched into an armband, it's been possible to identify its original owner, 
as a man named Egbert. He might even have been the owner of the entire hoard, which was buried deliberately some 1,100 years ago. As odd as it might sound to our modern ears, Egbert was a reasonably common name in Anglo-Saxon England. What's odd is the fact that we have an Anglo-Saxon name scratched in Anglo-Saxon runes on an artifact that's undoubtedly Viking in both design and origin. That indicates that either the arm ring or the whole hoard might have been won from Vikings in battle, or traded with Vikings after they arrived on the British Isles. There are still some historians who believe the Viking conquest of England might have been less bloody than it's often thought to have been, and this discovery might support their cause. Marijuana is a controversial topic. It's perfectly legal to smoke or otherwise consume it in some parts of the world, but it's a criminal offense in others. Regardless of what the law says about it in your country, smoking marijuana is a very old human habit. In fact, we've been doing it for around 3,000 years. We know this because of the 2019 discovery of cannabis residues on incense burners within the tombs that hide high up in China's Pamir Mountains. We know that early humans cultivated cannabis for its fiber and seeds as early as 4000 BCE. But this is the first direct evidence of the plant being smoked. What's notable about this discovery is the high levels of THC in the residue, indicating that this particular cannabis was specifically selected for its intense psychoactive properties. That suggests that these ancient Chinese people used cannabis to get high, rather than for medicinal purposes, although it's possible it was used in a ritualistic fashion by shamans hoping to experience visions. Thus far, cannabis residues have only been found inside the tombs of the elite, so if people were getting high back then, it was only the rich. Let's talk about a burial site that's been hailed as the British equivalent of the world-famous tomb of Tutankhamun. Somewhat improbably, the so-called British Tutankhamun site was found in Prittlewell, Essex in 2003. It's thought to be a royal tomb and was found by accident during roadworks. The only thing left of its human occupant was a few tooth enamel fragments, but the rarity and quality of the grave goods the person was buried with are sufficient for archaeologists to declare that this was the final resting place of an Anglo-Saxon prince from the 6th century, hence the burial gaining the nickname the Prittlewell Prince. The age of the chamber and its occupant make it the oldest known example of a Christian Anglo-Saxon royal burial. Among the goods in the grave were an ancient type of harp called a lyre, gold coins, glass beakers, and a painted wooden box, which is the only surviving example of painted Anglo-Saxon woodwork in Britain. Most curious of all is a flagon from Syria, which presumably found its way to Britain during times of Roman occupation. It's thought that the occupant of the tomb was Shiksha, the brother of King Sebert of Essex, but there's not quite enough archaeological evidence to prove it. In 2019, the world's largest intact mosaic went on display in Antakya, Turkey. In fact, the unveiling of the mosaic to the public was such a big deal that the entire Antakya Museum Hotel has been built around it. The mosaic, which is 1,300 years old and covers more than 9,000 square feet, was discovered by archaeologists in 2010. The experts think that it may once have been the floor of the largest public building in the grand and ancient city of Antioch. There are signs that the building was extensively damaged by earthquakes in the years 526 and 528. But while the mosaic was damaged during those incidents, it survived in one piece. Antakya is internationally renowned among archaeologists and historians for both the quality and quantity of ancient Roman mosaics that have been discovered there. But there are none that are on par with this one. The mosaic, along with the hotel that's been built specifically to showcase it, isn't far from the Crusader-era Church of St. Peter, which is itself built around a cave that's thought to be the world's oldest surviving Christian church. Truly, this is a special part of the world. Archaeologists in Poland still aren't sure what to make of the Bronze Age mace head they found in Dukla in mid-2019, but they're fairly sure it isn't local. It turned up during an exploratory dig 
aimed at finding relics of the Second World War. But this is far more ancient, and arguably far more interesting. If it can be proven that the artifact isn't Polish in design, it will be the oldest non-Polish object ever found in the country. That confirmation probably won't get historians any closer to finding out who made it, but it's a start. No other Bronze Age relics were found during the dig, so the artifact seems curiously out of place. It's probably around 3,000 years old and is similar, but not identical, to mace heads that were common in the Middle East during the same era. At one point, it would have been attached to a wooden handle and might have been used as a symbol of authority rather than a battle weapon. It probably found its way into the country through the Carpathian Mountains, but beyond that, it thus far proved to be impossible to trace back to its place of origin, wherever that might be. Subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell, and enjoy watching new videos on my channel. Thanks for watching and see you soon!